I'm a guy who doesn't know anything about anything, and I'm converting this 1993 Honda Acti into an electric four-wheel drive surf van. Sweet. Last time, I dropped the engine, and I showed you how I separated the transmission from the engine. Today, we are going to mount this electric motor to the transmission. first task is to figure out how we can actually mount the motor to this transmission. I'm going to show you a few different ways not to do it, and then maybe one way that you can do it. Again, I'm a guy who knows nothing about anything. Basically, this is the pizza box technique, where you take a pizza box and you lay the transmission bell housing on the pizza box, trace around it, and then very tediously take measurements with calipers and make sure that your holes are in the right place. Although I was able to get a fairly good outline traced using this method, it was completely useless. So on to method number two, scans. Many of you probably already know about the multitude of scanners out there that all cost way more than this van even is worth, but there is a scanner in your pocket. It's your phone. Here's how it works. It uses the LiDAR sensor on the front facing camera to scan the world around it. I was able to get this fairly detailed scan off of my phone, but once I dropped it into Fusion 360, I realized that for something where I needed a lot of accuracy, this was not going to provide enough detail and accuracy for me to make the adapter plate from. Well, that didn't work. So let's see if I can come up with something that does work. This next technique is the most interesting and the oldest technique. This is called a rubbing. And before you laugh, let me explain. This is a technique that machinists have used for a long time to make gaskets or adapter plates, just like what I'm doing here. Essentially, you take a piece of big butcher paper and a pencil and act like you are back in kindergarten. And as I learned quickly, the paper tends to move, and that's a problem. So, let's tear that one up, and we'll try again. On my second attempt, I was able to keep the paper much more still and get an accurate tracing. Finally, I had something I could work off of. And like sharing time in kindergarten, here is what I did. Here's my work. After that, I scanned it into my computer and then drew it up in Fusion 360. I then printed out a full scale drawing of that actual adapter plate with the motor mounts added to it and then glued it onto this piece of MDF. In order for the motor to have the correct spacing to the transmission, there needs to be both an adapter plate to the bell housing as well as a spacer. Both of these are one inch thick, so I'm using one inch thick MDF to cut these pieces out using my guides. Next, I had to put the transmission back into its original place just so we could get an idea of what space we're working with and what things we need to adjust.
After getting the transmission in, I took the motor and I decided to do another test fit with this coupler that I won't actually be using just to get an idea of the space. And you can see instantly that there is just not enough room. What I'm pointing at is where the actual flywheel would mount up. And you can see on the left here, it totally fouls with the leaf spring and not by a little bit. It's just way too big. So here I'm thinking maybe we could try to do something different. We could adjust the coupler. We could make a new coupler that's a lot smaller, perhaps even an inch smaller, and maybe that could give us the clearance we need. So then I went about taking the coupler off of this old Warp 9 motor. Okay, well, I wasn't even filming because I thought it was going to be a lot harder than it was. So I just used the gear puller and it popped the whole coupler right off. Now we are working on the coupler. This basically takes the shaft from the DC motor and it connects it to the clutch assembly, the flywheel, and then you bolt the the clutch and the pressure plate on top of that. I just wanted to jump in and explain quickly why we're actually retaining the clutch in this conversion. But first let's talk about what a clutch actually does. Here is where the input shaft from the transmission connects to the clutch and thus the wheels. Then around the clutch disc, you can see these friction pads. When they are in contact with the flywheel, this whole unit moves in one motion, just like that. On the other side is this pressure plate, which is attached to the flywheel. These forks, when pressed, separate the clutch from the flywheel, thus mechanically isolating the actual transmission and the wheels from the motor. Additionally, you can see these four springs on the clutch disc. These allow for some of the torque to be feathered, um, either when accelerating or when switching gears. So with that said, you might be wondering, without an engine, there's nothing idling that could stall, so why would we retain a clutch? Well, like I said, the first thing, mechanical isolation. So in the event of a throttle being stuck open or some other horrendous thing happening, we have a mechanical failsafe that we can use. When we press the clutch pedal, the actual vehicle will be isolated from the motor output. So that's one reason to retain a clutch. The second reason is because we can still reap the benefits of smooth shifting between all five and reverse gear. That's why we are keeping a clutch. So this one, which comes from Canny V, is a two-part coupler. And if I shake, I might not be able to shake it out, but... Um, so there's two pieces. There we go. So there's this... This piece, which is the actual coupler, and it has the bolts in the pattern of the flywheel. And then inside that is this, which is a taper lock bushing. And this one was specifically designed for this coupler. Um, and so it just goes, it just goes right in there and fits snugly. And then these bolts, which are called set screws, go in here and lock it in place. So, because I'm doing a car that is uh, not common, we have to come up with our own solution. And because there's not a lot of space, uh, we have to come up with something a little bit more unique. To explain, the first idea that I had was to make something like this, basically just this same thing with the bolt pattern from the Acti. But that's not gonna work because we don't have enough room uh, for this added one inch flange. The whole coupler is gonna have to be the match the length of the shaft, which is just over one inch. I think it's actually 1.12 inches. What I've done is I've basically got the dimensions of the motor pulled up and I use those as a reference and then I can build off of that. So right now I am at a place where I am basing 
my model off of a McMaster car taper lock bushing. So the hope is that I can make a design that I can send to a machine shop that will work with a off the shelf bushing. Um, there's some other ways that you can do this. Some, some other people that I saw took an actual sprocket like this right here uh, that has all the teeth on it and they used that off the shelf and then they just machined down all of the teeth and on the hub face they put in the bolt pattern of their flywheel. So that would work nicely but there's no sprocket that matches, uh, that has the right circumference um, for the flywheel bolts. So we've got to do something different. The first motor that you're seeing me use to mock everything up with in this video is the Netgain Warp 9 DC motor. This is a motor that has been used in EV conversions for over a decade. And I actually bought it off a guy on Craigslist who had been using it in his conversion and he was trying to upgrade to an AC motor. As a last ditch effort with the Warp 9 motor, I decided I was gonna try to see if it would fit if I just mated it directly to the transmission and removed the clutch. But that didn't free up really any space at all. So despite all my different trials, I gave up on that motor and I had to go with something different. So I got the HP EVS AC50 motor. This motor has 75 horsepower and around 120 foot-pounds of torque. Not only did this option fit better, but it let me keep the clutch. Now that I had the motor sorted, I needed to figure out this coupler situation. I spent hours designing a coupler in CAD with uh, off the shelf taper lock bushings, but all of that was a rabbit hole that I really didn't need to go down. What I ended up doing was using what the actual engine, the existing engine used to mate to the transmission, the crankshaft. I was able to buy a blown E07A crankshaft the crankshaft is where the actual flywheel bolts up to, so it already has the right bolt pattern and dimensions. I took it to a machine shop and I had them lock the top of it off and then bore out a hole where the motor output shaft could go. I made sure that the machinist only bored out enough space that it would be an interference fit with the shaft. This meant that I couldn't just put it on while the coupler was cold, but if I heated it up to a super high heat, then the metal would expand and I would be able to slide it onto the shaft. So I took my heat gun and I let it sit for about 30 minutes. While it was still hot and the key was inserted, I made sure to slap it on and then I wanted to just adjust it so that the face of the shaft lined up with the actual coupler's face. After letting it cool you can see just how rigid it already is locked on here. This is cool, this is exciting. Next, I had a big old package from Oshkut. A bunch of my parts came that were going to help me to hook the transmission up to the motor. We've got our adapter plate. This is one inch thick, 6061 aerospace grade aluminum. 
And here is the spacer that you can see already attached to the motor, as well as the third part to the coupler, which is this shaft collar that fully sets it onto the shaft. And it uses two set screws to do that. I started assembling the adapters. making sure to Loctite everything and torque them down to the correct spec. Then I was able to mount the flywheel, the new clutch with pressure plate, and here it is all spinning together. And after nearly a year of trying to figure this out, the motor is finally attached to the transmission. But oh no, there's a gap. That's a problem. We're gonna need to fix that, but that's for another episode. And that's how I got the motor connected to the transmission. If you like this video, please like and share. I've put a ton of work into building this van and I've tried to document it the best I could. So if you could help me just get it out there, that would be awesome. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.